Hey guys. <laughs> Setting up for you, Matardiness. Evan's here. Super excited uh, to wrap up this whole food equation. The reason why I have the board nasal, uh, I think it was Becky or someone told me that uh, um, when I write and I flip the thing to you, it goes in reverse. So we figured do it this way, you should be able to see it clearly. Sean is my cameraman, so if the camera gets a little wavy, you know who to talk to, Sean Floyd. So, <laughs> today I'm going to wrap up the conversation about food. And we know, as we talk about food, we always start with uh, your total calories needed. So, total calories is where we start. But if we're making decisions on calories alone, we can find ourselves eating the right number of calories, yet... Um, not getting the body composition change or the metabolic effect that we're looking to accomplish. You know, so just kind of um, map that out for you, now that I have something to write with. You take a female, she's 40 years old, she's five foot four inches, and maybe she's 160 pounds, you know. So this woman, um, and her body fat is 33% body fat, so she's what we call clinically obese, right? Um, so this woman here is eating maybe 1,500 calories, you know, um, which for most people would say that's a good amount of calories to consume, but if her calories are predominantly coming, um, let's say her calories, of the 1,500 calories, she's eating 100 grams of protein. We know every one gram of protein is four calories, so, uh, um, so that's 400 calories from protein. You know, let's say she has half of her calories, so 750 calories um, come from carbohydrates. So I don't know 750 times. I don't know why I pick an easy number. Let's do 800. So that's 200 grams of carbs. So that gives her 800 calories, 1,200 calories, and then she has the last 300 calories coming from fat. You know, 300 divided by nine is is what? Uh, um, is 30? Excuse me. Yeah, 330, somewhere around there, 33 grams in there of fat. Because every one gram of fat is nine calories. So it's about 30, 31, 32, 33 calories. 31 grams of fat in her meal plan. So she has a lower fat um, diet here, not a whole lot of carbs in this diet, and not a whole lot of protein. Even though she's not eating a lot of calories, 1,500 calories for a woman this size is not really a lot of calories, she can still be gaining weight. And the reason why is because we talked about last time, each macronutrient, so we go from calories, is it a good amount of calories? Check. You know, then we go to macronutrients, does this macronutrient combination work for this particular individual? You know? So each one of these things have their own pluses and minuses. So the pluses to proteins is that protein repairs your cells. You know, what some of the minuses to protein A, you know, people sometimes consume excess protein and think that that won't equate to fat storage, but excess of any anything equates to fat storage. Also, um, for some people digesting, you know, um, certain proteins can be challenging. I know for me, I can eat anything, you know, uh, uh, but uh, for my wife, you know, red meat many times sits heavy on her stomach. This is what we call bio-individuality. Everybody's a little bit different, you know. So some people have allergies to different proteins. And sometimes it's either faith-based choices, uh, um, like you don't eat certain animals, or it could be just certain preferences. You know, I know like what's popular today is to be like a pescatarian. So there's a lot of people who don't eat certain animals. Hello, you coming into our webcast? I'm sorry? You coming into our webcast? I don't think so. Okay, we have a visitor. We're live right now on Facebook. Uh-oh, um, and we got a visitor alive. So we got a gift, a present, what do we got? Okay, this was sent to the Great Clip Salon. Oh, this is where it went. Yeah. Great Clip. I did open it because normally if it's just sitting in my office, I just open it up. I'm super excited. I'm so excited. They, they, they blamed it on me. You know, the driver said. So, so it's really cool. These are body elastic blends. What's your name? Shamar. Shamar, nice. Yes. You gonna join us for our webcast? Sure. All right, come on, come take a seat. It's gonna be quick. That's all right. It's all right. We're gonna get a chair for Shamar. <laughs> Shamar's gonna learn a little about uh, nutrition and calories. Okay. So, awesome. So we're talking about calories, nutrition. Nutrition start with total calories. Once you identify the right number of calories, the next thing you have to figure out is what's the right combination you need. So Shamar, do you know what proteins are? It makes you strong. 
Okay. It's in meat, right? Meat, exactly. You, so the only non-meat source of protein is soy. And we know that soy mimics estrogen in the body, so it can cause anything from um, ovarian cysts to hormonal challenges and things like that. So that's why a lot of fertility doctors, a lot of OBGYNs, a lot of um, hormonal therapists say, hey, minimize soy in your diet. You know, so that's, you know, your proteins. Now, many people, some of the challenges with protein, we're talking about pluses and minuses. Proteins, in, um, they repair cells. So they'll make you strong, but they will repair your cells. Your hair, you know, you come in, somebody in the, in, comes in and their hair is not a whole lot. You know, ensure that they got the right proteins in their diet and it helps with hair. And I'm getting a nod from Shamar. <laughs> you know, so, uh, um, but then some of the myths with proteins that if I eat beans, I'm going to get protein. Beans are a carbohydrate, so you have to get what we call all 10 of the essential amino acids. Basically, there's 20, some papers you read may say 22, essential amino acids, but bottom line, there's about 10, uh, 20 um, amino acids, but some of them your body makes naturally. The ones that your body does not make, you have to consume, and that's what we call essential amino acids. So what's considered a protein or a complete protein is something that has all 10 of the essential amino acids in it. And you're only going to get that from animals, eggs, you know, um, whey shakes or, you know, some sort of casein. Something, some animal-based product is going to give you complete proteins. Also, if you under-eat proteins in your diet, your body will get it anyway. So no worries. If you do not get your protein in, it will take it away from you. Where will it take it from? It'll take it from your muscle tissue. It will take it from your organs. It will even start thinning your bones out in order to get the proteins that it needs. So protein is essential for day-to-day -day living. Carbohydrates, the good thing about carbs is that they taste really good, and there's a lot of choices, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, well, carbs feed your muscles and your brain. The bad side to carbs is that there's so much confusion. And we talked about with metabolism, hormones play a role in your body, and um, carbohydrates have a hormonal response to food, you know, or, or in your body. So I'll give you an example. You know, so carbs break down for simple simplicity. Carbs break down to what we call glucose mm -hmm. or sugar. sugar. That's right. My girl's with me. Just sugar. All right. So let's say this is your baseline normal, and let's assume that's healthy. Um, let's say you eat some for breakfast. What's a popular breakfast? You're trying to be healthy. What you eating for breakfast? Eggs. Eggs. Okay, she went straight for the protein. Mm -hmm. I ain't mad at you, girl. You know, a lot of times what I hear is that I do a shake and I put a banana in there and I put some um, kale and I put some berries and I chop up some fruit and I make myself a nice fruit smoothie. Or I hear I eat oatmeal. Yes. Right? And she's like, absolutely. Well, the problem with that is that that's all carbohydrates. And what happens is your blood sugar will spike up. So let's say this is kind of like high. So your blood sugar spikes up. And to get your blood sugar back into this normal low, so to speak, your body produces a hormone called insulin. It's produced by your pancreas or the beta cells. And insulin spikes up. Sure, it comes down really fast. You know, um, if you're healthy, it comes down at the same rate that it goes up. But um, insulin comes down really slow. And we talked about this last time in the video a little bit, but I want to show you a visual of it. So normally right about here, our energy drops. It's that 2 p.m. crash to some people. Um, our energy drops or 9 a.m. crash, and we're hungry. And we're craving things that are uh, sweet or crunchy because those are normally carbohydrates, you know? So we're chasing after a way to get our energy back up. Carbs feed your brain. It also um, has this pleasure sense to it. So your body likes pleasure and is going to ask for it more and more again. So what happens is you have high insulin and low, um, lo low sugar, not unhealthy low, normal low, your energy is low. If you eat um, something, you know, let's say it was 9 o'clock in the morning, you probably have a coffee and a donut. And if you're in a diet, what you do is the ones with the holes in it. <laughs> You know, the non-donut diet donuts, the one with the stuffing in it. You're going to diet the ones with the hole in it. So you get coffee with donuts, and your calories jump up. I mean, not your calories, your blood sugar spikes right back up. I never thought of it like that. You never thought about it like that? Everybody's like, I'm eating diet donuts. Don't do it. You know, so your blood sugar spikes back up. So insulin just is about to come up, goes right back up. So you have a little bit of energy, and then you go to lunch. 
If you're on a diet, you go to Olive Garden and you have a, um, the soup and salad, five ninety five. You know, all you can eat soup and salad, right? <laughs> She's like, I just did that last week. <laughs> and then what happens is you eat a half a loaf of bread and your blood sugar spikes right back up. You know, so you get the spike in blood sugar, insulin as it was coming down, says, oh no, we got a handle of bread, so it goes right back up. And you're going through this chronic energy swings throughout the course of the day. The other side though, um, what's happening at your cellular level is this. So this is your blood, your blood. now we have glucose in the blood, and your cells are connected. So, uh, um, and to get that glucose out of your blood, your body needs the insulin hormone that just went up. Insulin opens the door to your cells and allows sugar to go into the cells. You know, and that's where your body uses those um, sugar for energy. So if it's a regular muscle cell, you use it for contracting your cells. If it's a fat cell, you will use it for storage. If it's a liver cell, you use it to create triglycerides and, and things like that, some, some, some liver fat. So, and some glycogen, it stores it there as well. So if this is a fat cell, then that glucose now gets converted to what we call free, to fatty acids and it gets stored in the fat cells. So the way insulin gets your blood sugar down is by storing that sugar as fat in your cells. So what we wanna do is eat in a, certain, in a way where our blood sugar goes up slowly throughout the course of the day and then comes down slowly. Therefore, insulin is gonna come up at the same pace that sugar goes up, but it takes the same uh, long, lengthy time to come down as it does, period. And when these two are low together, where there is no insulin and there is no glucose, what fat cells do at that point is they convert the fat, the saturated or the stored fat, into what we call free fatty acids, and your body can burn those free fatty acids just like carbohydrates. So we're not just looking at carbs and food from a caloric standpoint, we're looking at how does that handle my body. So we talk about that with meal timing, and when do you put carbs into your diet, when do you take it out of your diet? You know, what kind of things you do to how much carbs should you get versus you shouldn't get? You know, we say we start our meal plan with figuring out how much protein we need based on your lean mass, you know, and then we go into how much fat we need to create health based on your body typing, and then carbs is the leftover calories. So I just want to show you that's what's going on. On top of that, a lot of our carbs today have ingredients that are poor for our health. So we look at things like high fructose corn syrup or partially hydrogenated oils, you know. So, you know, people talk about empty carbs versus full carbs. That, or, or, you know, non-empty carbs, I guess, you know. And what that's all about is nutrients-dense food versus non-nutrient-dense food. And we know that, hey, if I eat a, uh, um, a bowl of spinach, it's loaded with nutrients, but it doesn't give me the calories I need. So we don't want to just go for these mystical, healthy foods that don't give us calories. We want to ensure that we're getting the caloric load done properly. So really, really important. Uh, um, stuff with that, and that's carbs, but you do need carbs, so if you're eating like 50 grams of carbs, you probably are in trouble. Now there's times where, you know, you may do that, but the big things ensure that you're making up the calories through another macronutrient, you know, or if someone goes on a low-fat diet, you know, because, you know, make sure you're still getting the rest of the calories in to get uh, um, the total calories, because remember, if you don't do that, your metabolism will tank to adjust to whatever caloric level you have. You know, so really, really important that we keep the metabolism whole. We always start with total calories. Lastly, fat. So we know fat is, um, and sometimes you, you do that, you know, I'm not going to give a general answer of how many carbs to have, not to have, uh, um, because that's very, very individual for somebody. But you just need to know how carbs does affect your body. And you can play around with it. You know, I tell people, if I was to scale out my, you know, carb intake in the day, so this is a.m. You know, to to dinner or a last meal. You know, last meal, not like death last meal, just last meal of the day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, you know, my carbs start high. So this is my carb intake here, the carb on a scale. You know, it'll start here and end like that. So I have more carbs in the morning. I have more carbs during the workout. And then, you know, when I'm just sitting down watching Chopped and whatever else I'm watching on TV, you know, my carbs are fairly lower at night, you know. 
So my meal here, we have more meat and a ton of veggies, and you know me, I like veggies in all my meals for as much as possible. So let's go to fat. Let's talk about fat, baby. So fat's critical for your health, right? You know, and a lot of times what we say is like, well, I just do low fat. I'll just have a chicken breast salad. And we're just a limit. Oh, 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 I don't eat cheese. Why don't you eat cheese? You know, cheese has a lot of fat in it. You know, or, uh, um, you know, so we have this idea that fat makes you fat. And the reality is that fat doesn't make you fat. Excess calories makes you fat. Now, what is excess calories? Excess calories is more than you need. A hormonal response to excess carbohydrates, or what we call high glycemic carbohydrates, can make you fat. So right before I go into that, I forgot to mention this with carbs, you could be eating 800 calories in a day. And if you're lower than you should be eating, so you should lose weight theoretically, but if your carbs are too high, or not working with your body typing, then you, you could be in a situation where the insulin gets really high, you start storing fat. I'm telling you, we've seen so many people over the last seven, eight years, and uh, um, or seven years now, and I've never seen. I talked to um, GYNs, I talked to internists, I talked to um, cardiovascular physicians, and we've never seen insulin resistance as high as it is today. Basically, that insulin that we talked about in that spike, your body overshoots because it's not recognizing the amount of insulin that you're producing. And I'll probably do a whole video just on insulin resistance because it's one of my favorite topics. But uh, um, so anyway, you can have un too low calories and too much of one of the macros and it throws you off. Now what's the plus with fat? Fat tastes really good. You think carbs taste good? Fat tastes even better, you know? And ask any old chef, you know, an old school chef, they put turkey neck fat back, they put all this stuff inside of their foods, they put butter, you know, they put all these things because they have flavoring. They taste really good. They do, you know, they do full fat cream in that stuff because it tastes really good. You know, so fat, outside of the taste side, that has nothing to do with your metabolism, by the way. It's just kind of like a luxury of life, you know. Uh, uh, um, the health portion of how fat helps you is that it makes you feel satiated. So this idea of satiety is the full feeling. And when you eat things with fat in it, it makes you feel full. You know, so that's something that fat helps out with. It also helps you make vitamin D. You know, a lot of the physicians today are saying vitamin D is what we call pro-hormone or like unto a hormone today because it's critical for all cellular activity in the body. I mean, theoretically, we're supposed to get vitamin D out of the sun, but none of us go to the sun 20 minutes a day unprotected because we're afraid of skin cancer. You know, the darker your skin is, it doesn't matter how much unprotection you have, the darker your skin, the harder it is to metabolize vitamin D from sunlight. So we have to supplement with vitamin D and the recommended supplement for vitamin D is three, 35 times your weight. So if I'm 200 pounds, I should probably be doing about 7,000 IU of vitamin D per day. But uh, um, um, fats help you do that. They also help you create hormones. And hormones are the messengers, so we're not just talking about sex hormones, hormones are the messengers that tell your body what to do when. You know, so fat you know, helps you with hormone production also helps you digest food, you know. So there's a lot of benefits to fat. Some of the disadvantages to fat, one, is that like unto carbs, we eat a whole lot of it. You know, it's really easy to hide it in our food. That chicken breast salad that I just cracked the joke on, it also had this nice dressing on top and we didn't count that. And many times we sneak in calories, you know. We have, oh, I just put a little bit of butter on that bread. Or I, you know, I add mayo to this, and I add fat to this, and, and we didn't even know we cooked with it. it's olive oil. <laughs> or even worse, worse than olive oil today, it's coconut oil. You know, it's healthy. Or you know, who needs to measure avocado anyway? Because isn't it like the new superfood? You know, these are all lies. You know that that's you have to measure it. It's quantifiable. Your body doesn't care if the marketing says it's a superfood or not, and uh, um, we can, we can easily overconsume it. I'm really guilty with that with nuts. Nuts are a fat, not a protein. And I like nuts, they taste good, they're crunchy, um, they help me uh, um, throughout my day, but if I don't measure it, I can go through a big bag of almonds in a day. Just bored of me eating. You know, just there, in between stuff, before you know, it's like, who ate all my almonds? You know, everybody's like, who did So, also 
one gram of fat, <laughs> it's true, it, it equals nine calories. So fat is the most expensive uh, um, of the macronutrients. So one gram of protein is four calories, one gram of carbs is four calories, but one gram of fat is nine calories. So this is where body typing comes in because depending on your build, and I wish TJ was here, but you know, he, TJ is shorter than me for you guys who don't know him, he has like his arms, like you take my chest and arms, and that's TJ's <laughs> arms, you know, he's a big dude. Uh, um, so, but uh, he, 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 he's just short and, and big, you know, so TJ, you know, because of his build and his body type metabolizes fat very well, but he doesn't metabolize carbs very well. You know, so he can afford to have more fats in his diet than I can. On the flip side, you know, we have Tori, our, our admin, she's tall, you know, long arms, long distance runner, has the ability to burn through carbs fairly well. And many times I see people who are eating according to the fads out there instead of eat, learning how to eat towards their body. But that's the deal with fat that, you know, excess saturated fat will clog your arteries just from a health perspective and kill you. You know, um, so will excess carbs, though clog your arteries too, it's kind of interesting. But, you know, so the disadvantage is that it's easy to overconsume. One gram is nine versus one gram is four. So I just wanted to run through that with your food safe. So remember, we start with, am I getting enough calories in? How do I figure that out? I, I measure what I eat, I write down what I eat for three days or so, as long as my normal three day clip, and I can see how much I'm eating, you know? And then I can go, do I need to go up or down? And we talked about those who under eat, so let's say I figured out what I was eating, and I was eating 800 calories or 1,000 calories. Well, I'm eating too little bit. Do your thing, girl, so you gotta get, do some hair. <laughs> They're calling me, fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's been nice. Thank you. I uh, didn't know you guys were over here, though. Oh, cool. Yeah, Sean, don't give me that face. <laughs> so, uh, uh, um, <clears throat> so, uh, um, if you're eating too little, then you may need to start reverse dieting to get your calories up in order to get your metabolism up. You know, so again, if that number comes in probably under, I would say unless you're, you know, uh, um, under five feet, five feet or under, and that number comes in under uh, um, a thousand calories, there's probably, you know, you probably want to start slowly increasing your calories. Then, once we, as we get the calories up, you figure out how do I eat for my body, and you start playing around with it. You know, now again, we do that, that's what we do here, so we can definitely help you do that. But once we help you do that, we can help you speed up. And I mean, so, talking about reverse dieting, I just thought of, you know, one of my favorite clients. And uh, um, when she came to us, she was eating about a thousand calories a day and um, less than 50 grams of carbs. And she couldn't lose weight. Working out four days a week, an hour each time. And I remember we got her up to 2,200 calories and 200 grams of carbs, and she dropped like 30 pounds along the process. You know, so it's real deal. And I'm telling you, it's, it's lots of fun. People are always afraid to add calories and carbs, but it, it works. Um, and I'm not the high carb, low fat guy either. I like my fats. But it's just figuring out your body typing. Then once you have that going, then you, you play around with, with your macronutrients. So if you say, hey, I want to start here at 1,500, and maybe I'll start for two weeks or a week or so at one uh, macronutrient split, meaning a certain amount of protein, carbs, and fat, and then I'll just play around with that pie shape until I find something that works for my body. And then we kind of rock and roll from there. So there's a lot more stuff we can talk about with um, food and metabolism, but I wanted to get that thought process out there because if you understand that food is not just the calories, it's not just the macros, it's how these things affect my body, hormonally, you know, which is really important and makes a big difference. The lamb saver protein is that they have a higher thermogenic cost. Uh, thermal, think about heat, they cost more energy-wise than all the other macronutrients. So even though carbs and protein are the same, let's say I get stuck late at night, I'm really hungry, and I've already eaten what I need to eat, what's going to injure me the most is a piece of protein. You know, so I may say, hey, let me grab a couple pieces of chicken. Uh, um, and if I do the chicken legs, the fat's going to help me feel a little bit more satiated, and the protein alone is going to um, burn my, is going to wreck my metabolism a little bit more to burn some more calories. So, um, just the food of thought, food of thought there with those kind of things. So, we're excited to share. Did anybody have any questions on there? <laughs> no questions. So, good stuff. But that's food, that's calories, that's macronutrients. 
Uh, um, you need all three of them in your diet. So if somebody puts you on something, you know, and don't be deceived. It's easy for people to put you on a meal plan and cut out a macronutrient category. You don't even realize it. You know, oh, we'll just do eggs and spinach for breakfast. We'll do a protein shake. We'll do some, uh, um, some meat and vegetables for lunch. And before you know it, it's dinner and you didn't have any carbs in your diet. Or on the flip side, let's do egg whites and let's do this and let's do this. And before you know it, you don't have any fat in your diet. Well, let's just do plant-based, you know. And, and that's really common right now. I haven't seen um, as many people go down that road as any other time except for now. And people claim, oh, I feel so much better. And part of the reason why they feel better is because they up their vegetable intake. But the reality is that um, they could just up their veggies now. Because your dark, leafy, green, dark green leafy vegetables, even though they're carbs, predominantly they're fiber, and fiber is a carbohydrate that helps um, with digestion, helps with heart health, you know, which is really cool. You can OD on fiber, you know, meaning if you eat too much fiber, you feel bloated and everything else as well. But, uh, um, you know, fiber helps you big time, so it's definitely something you can inject into your diet uh, or, and have some really cool results. Again, this is Evans here at Senior Fit. We're really excited to be able to share with you guys and talk about some of these things. Next time, we're going to go into exercise and we're going to have some fun. And we talk about what are the best exercises we have to give you this world. Right. Talk to you soon and have a wonderful weekend. Oh, Saturday morning, we do. I thought he was going to press finish. Saturday morning, we do have a, um, the Saturday morning workouts here for free at 7 a.m., as well as. On the 22nd, we launch our new um, challenge, our new fitness challenge, and uh, um, we're really, really excited about that. We have some new stuff that we're going to put out. It's going to be like we're going to start with the Saturday morning people first um, as far as executing the methodology, but I think you guys are going to really love this new challenge. So talk to you soon, and have a wonderful day.